Data analysis is a time-consuming task. It requires working knowledge of complicated Excel formulas and some Python programming expertise. When analyzing data, I used to spend hours scouring through the internet, watching online tutorials and debugging code. Until recently, ChatGPT is a game changer in the data analytics space. Even if you don't know Excel and cannot write a single line of code, ChatGPT puts the capabilities of a junior data analyst at your fingertips. All you need to do is ask ChatGPT a question and it will use its natural language capabilities to analyze your data and solve the problem. In this tutorial, I will be teaching you how you can turn ChatGPT into your own personal data analyst. To be able to follow along to this tutorial, you must have a paid subscription to ChatGPT+. Okay, let's get into it. Meet James. James is a personal trainer who runs his own fitness company. Now, as a small business owner, James needs to be very careful about spending money. He cannot afford to hire too many people. And lately, he has started using ChatGPT to analyze customer data and make business decisions based on it. You see, although James knows fitness like the back of his hand, he has no experience working with spreadsheets or programming languages. Math and coding are not his strong suits. In the past, if he wanted to analyze customer data, James would have had two options. One, hire professionals who are good at making sense of raw numbers and at analyzing data. Or two, spend countless hours learning these skills himself. Either way, he would have had to spend a lot of time and money. But thanks to ChatGPT and the tool's specialized data analysis features, James can now analyze data in minutes, taking his business to the next level. In this video, we will be looking at how James uses ChatGPT for data analysis, and throughout this video, we will be analyzing a transaction data set from James's fitness company. Okay, so first, we're going to talk about ChatGPT's inbuilt data analysis plugin. When you use this data analysis plugin and give ChatGPT an instruction, ChatGPT will write code to solve your problem, run this code, and provide you with the desired result. And this is the equivalent of you writing code to solve the problem yourself, something that not everyone can do because programming is a skill that takes years of practice to master. Someone like James, for example, would greatly benefit from a feature like this. Okay, let's now look at how the data analysis plugin works with a simple example. You can find the file for this analysis in the video's description. Just download the file titled James Transaction Dataset. And this data set comprises transaction data related to James's fitness company in the past month. So in the Excel file, you can find two sheets related to James's fitness company. There is e-commerce sales and you have gym services. The first sheet that is e-commerce sales looks like this. It contains the products purchased by each customer, the price of each item, a discount percentage, and the total amount spent. So we're going to be focusing our attention on this sheet first, okay? Let's start by uploading this Excel file to ChatGPT. And when you go into ChatGPT, make sure that you've selected GPT-4 and not GPT-3.5. Again, you need to have a ChatGPT Plus subscription if you want to be able to access this. Okay, now just click on the little paperclip icon and upload your file. Previously, this interface was a bit different. You would have had to go to plugins and enable the data analysis feature separately. It was called advanced data analysis, but OpenAI has since made some changes and the data analysis feature is now integrated into the core GPT-4 model. And you can just directly upload your file here like we did. And now we're just gonna ask it to describe all of the columns present in the data set. Okay. So it says analyzing, and that just means that ChatGPT is writing some code to analyze the file that we've just uploaded. And it is done. So it's telling us that this data set has six columns, and it's listing out all the columns present. It's saying, you know, we have customer name, ID, product, and so on. So you can click on this little blue thing here to actually see the code that ChatGPT has generated. And this is Python code, so you can copy paste it and run it yourself if you'd like. And I tend to do this because ChatGPT can only take in 10 files at a time, 
Sometimes I need to analyze a thousand files at once. So I'll just copy the code that ChatGPT has generated and I will write my own loop to iterate over it. But let's get back to the task at hand. Notice that although this Excel file has two sheets, ChatGPT has only given us information about the first sheet. So it's only listed all of the columns in the first sheet and it's completely ignored the second one. And if you want it to analyze the second sheet, you're going to have to explicitly state that because it usually just writes code assuming that the first sheet is the default. OK, so let's let's focus on this first sheet for now. I'm going to ask it about all of the unique products in this e-commerce data set. I want a list of all the products that people have purchased from James. OK. So it has run some code and it's telling us that James has only sold these five products in the store. You have a yoga mat, a treadmill, an exercise bike. And um, now I'm going to ask it about the total number of transactions in the data set. OK, great. So now we have a basic understanding of James's transaction data set. We know that he has sold five products and we know that he has made around 1500 transactions in a month, which is good for James. OK, so now we'll go a step further with this analysis. We will do some simple calculations and we'll start by asking ChatGPT to calculate the total amount of sales that James has made from all of the transactions. OK, so it looks like James has made over $140,000 in online sales, which is great for James. Everything that we've seen so far has been pretty straightforward. Anyone with basic Excel knowledge will be able to go in and count or sum a column. So let's try asking ChatGPT to do something a bit more challenging. To improve his business strategy, James has two questions. One, which of his products are best sellers? And two, are people's purchase decisions being impacted by prices and discounts? In other words, James wants to know if higher prices and lower discounts translate into more sales. So to gain insight into the best-selling product and to understand whether prices have an impact on sales, let's prompt ChatGPT with a four-part question. OK, so I've just pasted this four-part prompt into ChatGPT. And don't worry about typing all of this out yourself because I've added all the prompts to this link. So you can just go in and copy paste them. And back to this prompt, we're first asking ChatGPT to identify the product that has been purchased the most. And then we're asking for the average prices and the average discounts for each product. And finally, we're asking whether prices and discounts have an impact on purchases. ChatGPT has responded to each part of our prompt. So let's go through its responses one by one. Firstly, it's telling us that the most purchased product in terms of quantity is the exercise bike. And then it's giving us the average selling price of each product. And interestingly, it looks like the yoga mat is more expensive than the exercise bike, which is a bit strange. James should probably work on his pricing. And maybe that's something else you can ask ChatGPT after this video. I also want to point out that this kind of analysis would require an intermediate level of expertise in Excel or a programming language because you would have to group and aggregate data or create some kind of pivot table. And ChatGPT was able to get us there in just a couple of seconds, which is great. OK, so in response to the third part of our prompt, ChatGPT has given us an average discount amount for each product, which is at about 9 to 10 percent. And if you look at the product that got the most sales, the exercise bike, you will notice that the discounts on the exercise bike is actually lower than it is for the other products, which tells us that higher discounts don't necessarily translate into more sales. But to get a better understanding of the relationship between discounts and number of purchases, let's look at ChatGPT's response to the next question. ChatGPT is telling us that in order to better understand the relationship between prices and sales or discounts and sales, that we'd have to perform a correlation analysis. And correlation is just a technique that allows you to quantify the relationship between two variables. I won't be going too deep into it in this video, but ChatGPT has got this entire explanation of what correlation analysis is, and you can read it if you'd like to. OK, so after doing all of this analysis, ChatGPT is just telling us that there isn't a conclusive correlation between prices or discounts and sales. This means that the people buying gym equipment from James aren't really influenced by prices or discounts. 
There are other factors that motivate them to buy, perhaps things like product interest. And as a business owner, this is valuable feedback. You can use this feedback to rethink your pricing strategy and entice future customers to make purchases from you. So now that we've done some qualitative analysis, let's see if ChatGPT can create some charts to help James with his decision making. Now we're going to be using the second worksheet that is Gym Services for this visualization. And this worksheet has all the information about the fitness classes and the training sessions that James's customers have attended. So let's start by asking ChatGPT to describe the columns present in this sheet. Okay, so it's listed customer ID, service name, service type, and all of the other columns present in this worksheet. Now, James isn't a very technical person. He doesn't know exactly what he wants to visualize in the data set or what types of charts to create. All he knows is that he wants to use the trends found in previous customer interactions to improve future sales. So all he has to do is type a prompt like this into ChatGPT and ask it for visual ideas. And ChatGPT has come up with a bunch of visual ideas. It is saying that we can look at purchase trends over time, service popularity, revenue, and discount trends. And for the purpose of this video, let's pick two things to visualize. We'll start out with visualizing sales trends over time. And we're gonna ask ChatGPT to come up with recommendations on improving sales based on these trends. So it's given us this nice bar chart visualizing sales information and right off the bat, we can see spikes in total sales in April, May and December. And ChatGPT is saying the same thing. It's saying that there are spikes in April and December and it's telling us that sales are lower in months like January, August and September. And then it's recommending that James investigate why sales are higher in April and December. If it's because of special offers or some kind of seasonal promotion, it's saying that we should replicate that strategy across different times of the year. And then it's also suggesting that James introduce special campaigns or offers in months with lower sales. And then there are a few more generic pieces of advice like conduct surveys and loyalty programs. And this isn't specific to James's data, but it's useful advice nonetheless. Okay, so the second thing we'll be looking at is the number of sales by each service. And this will tell James which of his services are more popular, which of his services are selling more. And we have this nice chart here again. ChatGPT is saying that core strengthening is the most popular class, followed by wellness coaching. And it will be interesting to look at the impact of prices on sales to see if classes that are cheaper are also more popular, just like we did earlier. Or even look at seasonal trends. For example, are certain classes selling more during the summer? And I'll let you do some of this analysis yourself by asking ChatGPT follow-up questions. But for now, let's look at ChatGPT's recommendations. So ChatGPT is saying, focus on your high demand services, focus on selling them even more and create more time slots for these classes and just really capitalize on classes that are already selling well because people like them. And then it's suggesting creating package deals. So it's saying combine a popular service with a less popular one. I like this recommendation of combining a less popular class with a more popular one because sometimes you could be selling a great service that people just don't buy because they don't know that it's great. For example, when I first signed up for my gym membership, I had access to a couple of free classes like yoga, meditation, something called animal movement. These are things that I wouldn't have paid for myself because I was skeptical of their effectiveness. But because they were part of my membership, I was willing to try them out. And these are now classes that I would pay for myself. So I think that these are pretty solid recommendations from ChatGPT. We have a few more recommendations here like customer surveys, collecting customer data for better targeting, as well as cross promotion, which is all great advice. We've honestly just skimmed the surface as to what ChatGPT can do in terms of analyzing data because we've just asked it two questions. And this data set has many more insights in it that you can uncover. And I'd recommend playing around with it yourself. 
See if you can go a step further. Ask ChatGPT to give you the most popular services by time period. Ask it about discount information or pricing information. See if there's a difference between the various service types. The biggest strength of language models like ChatGPT is that they can connect the dots really well across many data points. They're able to uncover patterns and see trends that humans tend to miss. And this is because the GPT models have been trained on so much text data from all over the internet, and they've learned all of these patterns and relationships from these data sets. And they can now identify similar patterns in new data sets that you upload to them. If you want to learn how to use ChatGPT to take your workflows to the next level, I have a book titled Automate Everyday Tasks with ChatGPT. You see, while many users know what ChatGPT is and can use it to perform simple tasks, they often struggle to make the most out of it. They aren't tailoring their prompts to get the best possible responses. They aren't saving as much time as they possibly can. In this book, I will show you how to leverage some of the latest features of ChatGPT. You will learn to analyze data in minutes, use ChatGPT to perform tasks like marketing and content creation, as well as automate repetitive workflows. You can find the link to my book as well as a discount code for 50% off in the description. And this code is only valid until the 4th of January. And yeah, I hope that this video helped you better understand ChatGPT's data analysis capabilities this feature is especially useful if you're a non-technical person who wants to analyze a bunch of data, or if you just want to save time. If you have lots of data and just want to be able to get to the meat of it, ChatGPT can help you do that pretty quickly. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do like it. Also, do subscribe to my channel. I will be posting more tips and tutorials on data, AI, and programming in the next few weeks.